coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Evil Air to acquire up to 10 Lilium Jets. Archer's Maker Evital achieves full transition. And FCC severely curtails planned Starlink satellite infrastructure. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Evil Air to acquire up to 10 Lilium Jets. Lilium announced the signing of a contract with Evil Air. The Inquit partnership includes a firm commitment on Evil Air's part for 10 Lilium Pioneer Edition Jets, with options for an additional 10 aircraft. Lilium CEO Klaus Rova added, quote, We are delighted to launch our Lilium Pioneer Edition jet with Evil Air. Not only is the demand for sustainable regional air mobility in London high, but Evil Air's experience serving customers with business jet and helicopter operations is a great fit to our commercial first phase. Getting the premium segment to adopt our aircraft while preparing the entire ecosystem for a larger market. Evil Air's visionary approach to sustainable air mobility also makes them the perfect partner for the UK." End quote. The newly signed deal, under which Evil Air will make an undisclosed pre-delivery payment to secure acquisition of the first 10 Pioneer Edition Lilium jets, marks the formal launch of the platform, so says Lilium. Per the agreement, Evil Air will operate a service center to maintain the EVTOL and develop landing sites appropriate to the aircraft. As Lilium's lead partner in the UK, Evil Air will also facilitate sales of the Lilium jet to private individuals. In March 2020, NetJets agreed to add 150 Lilium jets to its fleet, and in September 2022, Globe Air committed to purchasing 12. And after the break, General Atomics tests networked Avenger drone. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Welcome back. Now it's time for our Next Gen Minute. General Atomics tests networked Avenger drone. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems tested their collaborative networked UAVs with crewed fighters for enhanced multi-platform sensing, demonstrating the capacity for their MQ-20 Avenger as an uncrewed aircraft. The test used the MQ-20 flying alongside a Lockheed Martin Sabre liner and a pair of F-5 Advanced Tigers from Tactical Air Support. The Tigers were equipped with internal TAC IRST sensors, allowing General Atomics to perform multi-platform infrared sensing. During this event, each aircraft performed coordinated maneuvers to sense relevant airborne targets in the infrared spectrum. Skypersonic tenders rover to NASA Red Cat subsidiary Skypersonic has delivered its rover equipment for a simulated Mars expedition at the Johnson Space Center. The rover package includes the rover itself, the necessary support hardware, and a drone system that will allow the crew of NASA's simulated Mars missions program to remotely explore Martian-esque terrain on Earth. The 1,700-square-foot Mars habitat resides at the center's range in Houston, Texas. Skypersonic's drones and rover will be tested somewhere sufficiently mountainous on Earth to assess their readiness, controlled from afar by Houston personnel. Airbus to develop hydrogen-powered engine 
Airbus has announced that it's about the business of developing a hydrogen-powered fuel cell engine. The hydrogen propulsion system is among the designs being considered to power a planned zero-emission commercial aircraft the consortium hopes to see in airline service by 2035. Airbus intends to carry out ground and flight testing of the Inuit hydrogen fuel cell architecture aboard its Zero-E demonstrator aircraft, an A380 currently being retrofitted with an aft, portside, fuselage-mounted gas turbine engine modified to run on hydrogen fuel. Droner's Manual 2nd Edition now available. ASA's 2nd Edition of the Droner's Manual compacts the most important and relevant knowledge of drone operation into a single guidebook. Author Kevin Jenkins walks would-be pilots through the needful for UAV operators looking to break into hobbyist, enterprise, or government operation. Jenkins includes stepwise guidance on building, programming, testing, and flying multirotor, fixed-wing, and hybrid frame aircraft for nearly any purpose. The Droner's Manual comes in ebook or softcover priced between $19.95 and $24.95 at distributing FBOs or online. And that was our next 10 minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Archer's Maker eVTOL achieves full transition. Archer Aviation has announced that its Maker eVTOL made its first full transition to wingborne flight on November 29th. Transition refers to the shifting of an aircraft's lift generation from one architecture and set of governing physical principles to another, most often from vertical flight by dint of downward vector rotor thrust to forward flight. Maker's design comprises no fewer than 12 rotors attached to six booms, the entirety of which are conjoined to the underside of a conventional high aspect ratio fixed wing. During takeoff and landing, all 12 of Maker's rotors are oriented parallel to the aircraft's longitudinal axis, thereby providing thrust for ascent and controlled descent. Once aloft, Maker's forward six rotors slowly articulate until their planes lie perpendicular to the aircraft's longitudinal axis thereby generating forward thrust, induced lift, and eventually accelerating the machine to forward speeds commensurate with wingborne flight. The November 29th test sortie saw Maker's tilt rotors lock into their cruise positions for the first time. The lift propulsion scheme motivated the aircraft to a steady calibrated airspeed of 91 knots. The Maker flight test program is working to see the aircraft FAA type certified in the latter part of 2024. And after these messages, FCC severely curtails planned Starlink satellite infrastructure. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Welcome back. FCC severely curtails planned Starlink satellite infrastructure. SpaceX's first-generation Starlink network comprises over 3,200 satellites. The company's second-generation Starlink network was to have spanned a massive 29,988 satellites. That was until Thursday, December 1st, when the FCC granted Elon Musk's Space Concern Authority to operate only 7,500 satellites at altitudes over 500 kilometers above the Earth. The FCC's decision was predicated in part on concerns expressed by rival telecommunication companies, environmental groups, astronomers, and other disgruntled parties about the second-generation satellite constellation's immense size. 
In its December 1st decision, the FCC wrote, quote, This limited grant and associated conditions will protect other satellite and terrestrial operators from harmful interference and maintain a safe space environment, promoting competition and protecting spectrum and orbital resources for future use. To address concerns about orbital debris and space safety, we limit this grant to 7,500 satellites only, operating at certain altitudes." End quote. Notwithstanding the partial approval, which underscores the compulsions and ethos for which the agency is infamous, the FCC rationalizes that it has indeed increased the number of satellites it's permitting SpaceX to launch. The FCC insinuated, however, that it might approve additional second-generation Starlink satellites in the future. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching!